Hello, this is Hot Could It Be, and I am here with the expiration logs of SCP-610. We're going to start with, with log 1 and, and go as far as we can and until I feel we are out of time. <sighs> After is oh yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and and subscribe to the channel. If you do not like the video, then uh, and you're going to be wasting your time. And I'm here for that as well. Anyway. We're getting into this with log 1. After salvaging the containment perimeter for SCP-610, the Russian government approved our request to research and investigate the area. For the first such exploration, in a small camera uh, mounted unit known as Herbie, it was as special as safe distance uh, directed towards Site A. Herbie has a battery life of 12 hours and a control range far wider than and that required for this dispatch. Herbie is able to enter Site A without incident. The landscape around Site A shows early signs of assimilation by singular SV-16 infected who have fallen at a largely random of intervals around what remains of the village. Many of the homes appear to have suffered fire damage which long since put out. However, a fair amount remain intact. A reconnaissance of Site A combined with thermal imaging has put at an estimated population of 79 infected. <sighs> a mobile infected are included in this number, however, it is difficult to retain an exact percentage of mobile versus immobile. Varying degrees of physical mutation due to SV610 are present in Site A, and it is assumed that all the inhabitants are in advanced stages of infection. Very observed the exterior of the village for two hours, during which time all, all infected behave with what appeared to be a loose series of social structure. Because her remained stationary during its observation period, it is unknown precisely what each individual infected person was doing. However, the central plaza experienced occasional bursts of activities and downtime. Requiring more information, however, it was instructed to follow infected as into the home. There is bumpy camera feed as Harvey scoots over the gravel behind the, the quickly shambly infected person. The interior of this home is the same as that attached to the primary file for SCP-610. The infected being entailed is the one sitting at the table. After entering the home, Herbie's camera was raised slowly as to not draw attention. This action was either unnoticed or ignored. The infected person is watched from the doorway as it hobbles around the home and stops at each of the infected organisms. However, it appears to ignore the one under the table, which, while not mobile, does not leave that, that area. This creature was before or infection is unclear. Oh yeah, I think they're referencing... This photo right here that I apparently can't zoom in on. Here, I thought I had forced, I I had forced zoom in. Whatever. After lapping the table and reporting this procedure three times, the primary infected and person known as Alpha henceforth or henceforward stops at the bedroom and infected known as Grandma uh, Abeda and proceeds to assault it with a furious punches. Grandma is unable to leave the bed for unknown reasons, but is not completely immobile as it flows its arms in response to the beatings delivered by Alpha. After several sustained minutes, and ends up this being and a piercing sound and explodes from the area around Beta, who then and proceeds to project a cloud of unknown matter into the air from his chest cavity. Alpha lingers in the air in a cloud as it floats in the air around him, slowly descending to the ground. The unknown life form on the table or side of Beta begins to twitch in an apparent seizure. Alpha then laps the room twice more, stopping in at each and infects the organism. But still ignoring the one under the table, as well as Beta now. After these two laps, Alpha seats itself at the table and reaches out to position the three plates atop it as if it was set, as if saying a dinner set. Now the plates are 
or position the facial uh, tendrils extending from alpha they go up until you coil onto one of the plates before tearing apart and separating. This is repeated at each plate. The, the image attached to SCP 610's primary the file is a still image of this occurrence. I have a feeling that it's been changed because I remember it looking a little bit different. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this doesn't quite look like what it was going on. Or what's being described, anyway. That looks weird. Anyway. After each each play is filled with Alpha's flesh, it leaves the table and approaches Herbie, which is moved from Alpha's path. Alpha leaves the home, but Herbie's camera remains focused on the table. After several minutes, a group comprised of six or seven infected enters the room from outside, still ignoring Herbie. Each infected scrambles as if movement is difficult, jerking in large steps or squirming in, in small ones. These infected at all surround the table, and each takes turns grabbing handfuls of the flesh steps is left behind by Alpha, pressing it into whatever orifices on them so that they can and some into mouths, some into their chests, some behind their backs, some under their arms. While all the plates are, are when all the plates are empty, this group leaves. Herbie remains here for several more minutes before retracting its camera and leaving. <sighs> Immediately after leaving the home, um, Herbie it collides with an object. Paying the camera around the obstruction appears to be the Alpha, whose face tendrils are intermingling with another in in infected, having similar mutations. The impacted is ignored and two infected part ways after several minutes. Herbie is then in directed to explore more areas of the village. <sighs> the remains of what appears is, is to have been a storage show a, a signs of severe fire damage as well as activity inside the building, which Herbie moves to investigate. The door is slightly ajar, and with former events from Herbie, it is pushed open. No notice is taken of this action, or it is ignored. Inside the store are several infected persons, most of whom are standing around. However, one is on the ground, rolling back and forth over the space of approximately a point three meters, one foot, and is ignored by the others. Every rolls under divided, separating the cashier area from the customer area, and pans around on the back counter. The upper half of a, of a person protruding from a cell door be, behind the counter. This person does not appear to be suffering from vet and infection, and wears the garb of a Russian soldier. Her resumes the camera in to confirm identification. It is as the eyes of this person are in constant movement, often focusing on Herbie. The rest of this of the soldier does not move. Herbie is directed to leave this area and proceeds to the back room. In the storage area, a large pile of bodies are stacked together. Some pieces of clothing are visible and appear to contain both military garb and everyday clothing. No facial features are discernible on any of the bodies due to the way they are stacked. Atop of the bodies, an infected sits, appearing to have its lower parts fused to the pile. Uh, and with its upper half in a wild state of flowing and seizure. Approximately every 10 seconds, a burst of spores fill eyes out of the top of this infected, it of which linger in the air. Herbie is directed to leave the building. After leaving the building, Herbie passes by the village route, in which are a series of immobile infected all facing the well. The arms of each of these infected persons and are stretched out, one in contact with the next forming a perfect chain, save for one whose arms are down at its side. <sighs> Harry passes by this last suspected to approach and, and appears to have been what appears to have been a town hall or mayor's building when the infected becomes mobile and snatches the rover up. Video feed from Herbie focuses on the face of the infected, which is strangely in perfect shape given the condition of the rest of its body, which is horribly loaded. This infected was once a young girl from appearance, age estimated at 10 to 12. Herbie is rolled side to side in its grip as it stares motionless at the over. The infected its face suddenly balloons in size and explodes outward in a series of flashy flaps that grip Herbie and draw it inside. Herbie's video feed terminates here.
Herbie was considered lost at this point, however no one at Control remembered her to turn off the video feed, assuming it cut. Five hours later, Herbie's video feed resumed, stationary and at a raised level pointing at the upper rim of the village well. The video feed contained some blur due to what happened, what appears to be a slimer film which often oozes across the lens but not when but when not obscured provides perfect quality recording. Herbie does not respond to any remote commands, but its video will track back and forth from target to target, zooming in and out of its own accord. Video feed is cut manually, and all connections to Herbie's units are ordered erased. Let's see into the next document, which is the second log. <sighs> hmm. The arcade structure of the perimeter surrounding SCP's extensive containment area, several Class C personnel were infected due to assaults from infected villagers or animals roaming the area, in addition to a number of infections as a result of escape attempts and careless behavior. Most of these infected persons in now were immediately destroyed with flamethrowers. However, a small collection of infected were contained in cold storage units which prolonged the inevitable progression of SCP-610's mutative properties. The decision was made to utilize some of these infected personnel as video relays and dispatch them into, new sites, into nearby sites. Hmm. Due to the concern and over loss of equipment as evidenced in SCP 610 L1, all three subjects that were used in this manner were sent in with a single video system to site to site C. Additional equipment issued for this dispatch include one gallon in a container of gasoline, three emergency flares, three 9mm pistols with three magazines of ammo each. Three single serving food rations. The infected personnel were instructed to observe and avoid interaction with the infected villagers as long as possible, but should a situation arise where they are met with aggression or feel they are losing themselves to SCP 6 Sense and influence, they are free to kill as many infected villagers as they so choose and do as much damage to infected objects and property as possible while, while maintaining video feed. The intent of this order was to provide a data of SCP-610 infected communities in a raid situation, so a plan of eradication could be better established. At the time of this expo at this expedition, Site C was suspected to be a possible origin point for SCP-610, having far a few removal infected in other sites, as well as structures which appear to have been layered over for several times with the terraforming effects of the immobile infected. Dispatch Class C personnel, known hence henceforth as. Uh, I would give them names, but I, I don't really have the time. So, D1, D2, and D3 were directed to a particular attention to anything that could be considered an origin point for SCP 610. The trek from our perimeter camp to Site C was uneventful. There's no evidence of any native animal life in the area. As Site C is approached, there is a noticeable rise in temperature within the last 30 meters of the trip that necessitates removal of the heavy cold wood based coverings that were provided. The temperature right ices again sharply at the entrance of Site C proper, which requires a further shedding of garments for fear of a heat stroke. Site C is described as being a, being a heavily humid and around 32 degrees Celsius or 89 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the first immediately noticed effects about Site C is an array of immobile pylons which encircle what is believed to be the entirety of the site. Separated by an apparent distance of uh, 5 to 6 meters, each pylon appears to be, four or to two, be, appears to be 2 to 4 infected persons fused together in one spot. On top of these pylon features, so those faces uh, or anuses are so visible in addition to several other or holes which do not naturally occur. All appear to act as heat vents. Where the heat is generated is unknown. Current belief is that this is an advanced stage of SCP-610 terraforming.
its environment to facilitate the spread of itself. <sighs> D2, who was uh, as far as the long end of progression of SCP-610 and of the three by a number of hours begins the seizure after only a few minutes in Site C during examination of the pylons. The progression to the scar tissue phase of SCP-610 infection is observed in full course as Z2 is fast on the ground, his entire body being overtaken by his artistically tan flesh almost as entirely after 45 seconds. D2 is terminated by gunshot from D1. It is equipment is left where it is. The spread of SCP-610 over D2 continues even after death of the body until all movement ceases. As perimeter control is relaying new addresses to D1 and D3, regarding the situation, there is a shift in the ground covering in Site C where his body is. New features just flesh like growth playing open beneath his body and a series of rubber tendrils coming from within the gap to pull his corpse inside. This its opening closes up quickly. Total time elapsed three seconds. As D1 and D3 decide to act quickly in these hotter temperatures, fearing, fearing the same fate, they proceed to the village center and encounter another previously unknown phenomenon. In the precise center of the town, on rising above what was the community well, is, is a sphere suspended by angled supports comprised of SCP 610. The flesh. This ball is real with uh, at the features of humans in early stages of SCP-610 infection, as well as, as a good number assumed to be in later stages. Now, there were specimens of non-human life forms such as deer and bears are also visible within the mass. The, in, in the entire sphere of flesh pulses at roughly a five-second interval, and with each pulse emits a ring of spore-like materials from its equator. This material floats to the ground and appears to be absorbed into the converted environment. D3 begins to adopt the sphere with the provided gasoline, but a question by a panicking D1 explains that this looks like a good, as good a thing of our, as any. At this point, Roger and Troy cease giving commands due to the rapid deterioration of events. There is no reaction from anything within Site C to any of this as actively until the precise moment at which a lit emergency flare is applied to spherical mass, which immediately goes up in flames. The remote feed flies back a noise from an unknown location that comes that seems to come from a location far outside of Site C, but was reported as being heard even at perimeter control by both of Site C and A. This noise is described as both explosive as the multiple high yield charges were detonated and on a light on a mountain side and alive. Like a feral creature roaring. Within 15 seconds following that, it sounds this Asian Site A reported that a series of explosions had occurred within the village. Five seconds after this report, the spherical mask in the middle of Site C explodes. D1 and 3 are thrown on by the blast. D3 is confirmed to cease by D1 after getting his footing, having suffered injury from some shaft, shaft nail from um, the well. D1 is able to report he has bruises and bringing ears for the sight from the rapidly spreading SCP-610 infection. He suffered no blast damage. During this recording of footage, D1 had his video equipment removed and was looking into it. Due to the angle of recording, it is unknown precisely what occurred inside C, but something draws D1's attention back to the center of town. Where he stares for several months and then is pulled in the opposite direction. The video equip equipment falling to the ground and recording in the skyward direction. Last moments of footage from D1's video unit display a ground and recording in its sky. Display a humanoid figure moving through the air, followed by the sound of an impact in the same direction. Within three seconds of this event, of this event an unknown creature steps out from. Steps upon the recording video equipment and destroys it. Perimeter control remained on high alert for a full 24 hours at all locations without any incident following this event. Proceed to the next document, which is the third one. The destruction caused by the rapid collapse of, of the Site-C exploration attempt 
during SCP-610-L2 result in a series of unexpected events in Site A. As the strange intracritical formation in Site C was burned and destroyed, the SCP-610 infected it inhabiting Site A were recorded by aerial drones going into seizures and convulsions. The immobile SCP-610 infected rapidly shriveled and died along with all the flesh material while spread across the eminent objects within the village. The mobile SCP-610 infected who were able to regain their footing all proceeded to what appears to have formerly been an upper-class residence and entered the building. As the infected entered the dwelling, it suffered a foundational collapse revealing the presence of a sinkhole beneath it. As size was a hole in relation into the structure above it, posed an impossibility for an entire building to collapse, suggesting something within the hole applied force directly to the structure with the intent to pull it inside and expose the hole. The revealed hole is approximately large enough to accommodate three grown men and standing so shoulder to shoulder. Light source is applied by a remote drone to penetrate further than four meters is of depth into the hole. Objects dropped down into the hole do not produce an effect sound, suggesting a volume potentially more than uh, 1,000 meters sound. Research of the exterior of, of the site A hole was on able to be carried out for two hours time. Samples of the atmosphere inside A indicated a complete depth of SCP-610 related materials. All infectious life that did not evacuate into the hole all died above ground and quickly it became shriveled husks. Man exploration of, of Site A was approved and commenced immediately. In a span of 30 minutes, a total of three research teams consisting of two with three research staff and forced by a armed escort or it's, or each were or dispatch and setting up stations within the remains of the village. Samples of deceased SCP-610 infected and converted matter were sent back to Ferrander HQ for processing and transport. One team was able to recover a small sample of still living SCP-610 and its tissue substance from a building and pack it for research. Within the second hour of exploration of, of Site A, a series of echo reverberation units were set up of surrounding the hole with the intent of getting an accurate mapping of the hole and possible branch tunnels. At, at the end of the, the second hour, hour before the echo units could be activated, seismic activity began to occur within Site A. Two teams of the original three remained on site, the third on route back to the Corona HQ with samples. The third team was instructed to proceed back to Corona HQ when seismic activity began and was told that Site A should not be returned to for assistance. Seismic activity at Site A kept at a a 2.3 Richter level before are petering off. Immediately following the seismic event, a torrent of SCP-610 spores erupted from the hole, layered the area around it for a span of 15 meters as, to any in as all staff on site were in level 8 hazardous material suits, this spore burst was starting but not lead to any infections. As the eruption and was being re reported, both teams at Site A came under attack from aerial life forms infected with SCP-610. These organisms were captured by remote drone video equipment and showed extremely advanced stages of infection. It is impossible to tell what they mutated from to the, this present state. Many of the avian creatures attacked by splitting their heads in half and clamping them against research members, pulling them into the air and dropping them into the hole when possible. These avian infected it were vulnerable to small arms fire. In dispatching them, a total of two research staff were lost to the hole and one injured to cr due to crossfire. The injured staff was put down immediately upon showing signs of infection due to a suit breach. The four video and radio concert was lost with the remaining teams inside Site A. A second seismic event began to occur, starting at Starting out at the 1 to 1.5 range in scale, attention was directed at the hole to prepare for a second assault. A second spore burst erupted from the, the hole during this rising seismic activity. At the point where scales registered a 3 to 3.5 and forced a new unseen in SCP 610 ND began to emerge from the hole. The unfortunate capture of this creature depicts an, an engorged human head, approximately 20 times larger than normal, pressing itself out of the hole with no discernible body. Video and radio contact were lost as seismic forces increased to 7 on the scale of for 2 seconds 
for two second duration, then abruptly cease. Further, area also lens of site A, a hole, and area depicts zero the activity and no traces of the research seems or there are ever having been there. All personnel and equipment are considered lost. Now we go to the fourth exploration log. This is a long one. <sighs> Which, regarding the discovery, research, and handling of SCP 610 rapidly degraded to a point where fail safe options were being considered. For over one hour, or nothing further had happened aside A following the loss of the research teams during the seismic events in SCP 610 L3. And subsequent contact with previously unseen in SP610 life forms. With the absence of activity outside a remote drone on this batch was authorized in two parts. The first part would drop a remote a relay device at the entrance, and so is site A sinkhole, and the second part would, or, would dispatch a drone to the into the hole directly to relay its data uh, to the remote relay for transmission back to HQ. Drones on site were powered by solar energy with a bat battery maintaining in a four hour charge. Attached is a video log recovered from the site a sinkhole drone before its loss. <sighs> video feed activate. Researchers face is seen looking into the camera, applying a polishing cloth to uh, uh, the lens. This is explored to aid of drought old rough with still skin because uh, it's, um, I'm not reading any of that. At craft. Coming online. System sec uh, out. Video confirmed. And feed is good to relay station. We're testing rotors as now and deploying is successful. The sound of a helicopter blade starts up as a video feed begins to lift in the air. Camera tilts so left and right to test pan features and then directs itself towards its side A sinkhole. Video feed is go. Agents are go. Links are green. Alright, saying drone down now. Audio from the outside world fades away as camera angles itself down and peers into the darkness with the sinkhole. After approximately two minutes of descent and lights, lights on the drone activate and illuminate of roughly a dark shaft. Initially, it is unclear what could have created the hole. At a glance, it would appear the shaft was created by a single event or had been dug over time. At approximately 15 meters of center, there are traces of SCP-610 material attached to the dirt and sucked to the rocks. This material is, is dormant but retains its texture and appearance, unlike samples from above ground level which is trivial, which trivials and dries rapidly. There is a possible connection with this material and events last recorded during SCP-610 L3. The scent continues. At approximately 100 meters in depth, a branch out and also become visible in the wall also the sinkhole. Panning of the camera reveals small tunnels branching out at apparently random intervals which are not restricted to any one side of the hole. These tunnels are considered too small for any useful exploration to occur. The same continues. Increase in the density of SCP-610 materials on walls is noted as that increases. At approximately 250 meters, the bottom of the sinkhole becomes visible and the tunnel slopes sharply, suggesting unnatural formation, which was apparently sus suspected. Drone video shifts to eliminate this tunnel, and drone proceeds forward through the area. SV610 cuts entirely of the tunnel now, and carries seconds to keep the drone from coming in contact with any surface. Yes. Movement is detected five meters ahead. Lights on the drone are dimmed and weapons and come online. The European Oskin drone is equipped with a 5.56mm machine gun containing 50 rounds of, it, of ammo. This is meant to be used to deter wildlife away from the drone and defend against aggression when possible rather than into this vest to target. Although it is fully capable of handling human aggressor, aggressors in small groups. Whew. Camera focus turns on the moving mass of flesh ahead at 3 meters. After focus clears, see camera, the movement appears to be coming from what appears to be a deer, unaffected, wriggling in the grips of tendrils composed of SCP-610 material. The deer is being suspended above the ground with unclear intent. 
It runs for the past the trap deer while holding it in view with the camera until safely away. Nothing occurs with the deer and the dread proceeds pass undisturbed. The previously fairly level ground of the tunnel displays large humps and apparently red emplacement. Approximately five meters ahead of the drown, thirty meters past the encountered deer. Upon approach, these lumps are not to be similar to the infected villagers who escaped from um, site A into the sinkhole after destruction of site C. The sound of rushing water is now detected and the drone is pushed forward. 100 meters further into the tunnel, all the sound of running water is now deafening. Drone lights as reveal a running stream of water, potentially from one of the adjacent at rivers in the, the area. A sample vial is placed in the water allowed to collect and release with an active if tracking beacon. Later recovery of this sample indicates no SCP-610 and contamination of groundwater. The tunnel splits in two at this point. One tunnel leads it's around the river and then seems to slope downward, while the other is directly above of a light source in the ceiling. The second one is selected to facilitate recovery of the drone. During adjustment of the drone's flight path, it comes in contact with a portion of the tunnel wall called an SCP-610, causing a deep gash from the layer of the the drone which is already healing and over when the camera focuses on the impact point. The drone proceeds upwards. Approximately 300 meters of upwards travel, taking approximately 45 minutes, results in the drone emerging into a windy section of mountain where it is directed to stay low. Camera panning of the area reveals what may have once been a village, long since abandoned. The price location is unclear, but it is assumed to be in the vicinity of Site B, judging from estimate as it's traveled by the drone. The buildings here are coded in decreased layers of SV610, unlike other buildings in Site A and Site C, which are coded in SV610. These buildings appear to be constructed directly from the, the tissue substance. <sighs> After a cursory scan of, S of Site B, it is, is determined there is no life here, either natural or SV610 related, and so the drone is directed back into the tunnel. As the winds around the area make the aerial recovery impossible. Upon the center of the tunnel, a deep roaring sound fills the, the audio and video feed. And video feed becomes choppy as something blocks the signal. During the periods in which the connection to the ground is as clear as its camera and weapons are angled downwards, right in front of a slow in speed to allow a faster drop. Video feed becomes entirely clear for the final two minutes before feed is lost. Rushing up towards the drone from the area below, or as well appears to be a lie to in, in face, stretch it to 20 times as proportions with no features save those created by the SCP-610 material. There are eye sockets with no eyes, a mouth with no teeth, the drone fires upon the rushing mass of SCP-610, but the bullets do not deter it. In fact, points simply are invisible for several seconds before closing over themselves. There is no room in the tunnel for the drone to take evasive action, and is swallowed by the mass. Roman scale skin is considered lost until three hours later, in which when the feed inexplicably returns. <sighs> Video feed from the drone appears to show a series of structures illuminated by one of the Two lights on the drone. The camera pans around without instructions for the remote ultralights or HQ, capturing a vast number of shambling entities within the area. SV610 material moves over the lens of the drone, and real feed is permanently severed. Manned excavation was approved. Results are in documents SCP 610 L5. What we're about to read now. This one, yeah, actually this one is a bit long. So, I think I'm going to have to stop it here, and tomorrow we will have to continue with SCP-610-L5. If you like the video, please 
leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you did not like the video, then you just wasted about 35 minutes of your life. I'll see you all tomorrow.